Alright, welcome to our next video for JP6 Enterprise Handyman Services. So today we're installing an Anderson 3000 series storm door. It's one of the easier storm doors to install for the entire series that Anderson makes. So we already measured our uh, opening here and this is a 32 by 80 storm door that we are replacing. This storm door uh, was measured at the time of the estimate. We verified that it's the standard uh, size of 32 by 80 and there's no special work to be done on this installation. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open this storm door box. On the box, it clearly says that this is uh, 32 by 80 left hand, which is our existing conditions over there. And the way I like to open up these storm doors is I run my finger along the side of the box and that allows me to open up the box without damaging storm door at all. So this door, this particular door comes with its handle set already selected for, because the customer ordered it online so this is a, a traditional style storm door this one's uh, in antique brass and the installation kit is in the smaller box in the installation kit you have the piston and the color-coded bags for the installation in your red bag you have the here we go you have the drill bit the 1 8 inch drill bit that already comes with it and insulation screws for the hinge side, but you won't need this bag at all. They all come with it. The bag you will need is a yellow one. So the yellow one has all of the fasteners that you'll need for this installation. What I like to do is when I open the bag, I'll immediately put six screws in my hand or in my pocket, because that's what I'm gonna need for the beginning of the installation. Now, I'll go ahead and place those in my pocket. Then I run over and I'll start uh, disassembling existing storm door. Uh, I believe you already saw me on the other video for the Emco 200 series. When I remove the piston, I'll go ahead and I'll put it in the lock position. When I do that, that, release, that uh, releases the tension on it and I can easily remove the pin and it comes out super easy. And the same thing with the pin on the other side. Once you remove that, put it on the side. Matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get this completely off the deck so I don't end up rolling down the stairs. Okay, the very next step we'll do is we'll remove the remaining hardware for the piston. A number two Phillips head drill bit is really a uh, drill, let's say a number two Phillips bit is all you need for this entire installation and a one eighth inch drill bit so you can do all your pre-drilling. It's always good to remove the interior screws on the hinge side while you have the door in the open position. Now, I know in my other video, I explained that I'd like to keep the chain so that I can install it on the new door. Unfortunately, for the 3000 series, since the 3000 series has a hidden screen on the top of the door, you cannot, you absolutely cannot reinstall the, the wind chain. So it's important to inform the customer that since they don't have the protection of the wind chain, that they always have to be mindful of their new storm door because it won't be able to be protected by the wind chain. Once we have this hinge side interior screws removed, We'll go ahead and close the door and we'll remove the screws on the exterior side of the hinge side Z-bar. We hold the door back and the whole thing should pull right out, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this door from its location. 
The way I like to carry these doors down the stairs is I'll roll it back, rest it on my forearm. And when you rest it on your forearm, you can actually carry a lot of weight without worrying about your back. I'm gonna lay this right next to it. If it was a sunny day, I wouldn't rest the door on the grass because the glass, if there's, if there's sun coming down to the glass, it'll kill the grass. Uh, but we don't have that concern right now because the sun's already on its way down. This should be all right. Then we remove the handle side Z bar. This door looks like it's been caulked in place. So we're gonna have to cut that out. So when I cut these out, I'll rest the, the blade right on the edge of the Z-bar itself instead of running the blade closer towards the jam of the door. This way, we don't run the risk of either scratching, capping, or scratching the wood jam and possibly giving ourselves more work than we need to. So when I run the knife up, I'll run the knife putting pressure against the aluminum jam because we know we're gonna remove it. And now we're good. We're gonna roll it back. And we'll run our blade in the same manner. Against the Z-bar, staying away from the capping because the capping is really easy to damage or scratch. So we want to do whatever we can to stay away from the existing capping. There you go. That It. Looks like this door has been shimmed before. We're going to reuse the same shims because the door was already giving us a good seal. So it's possible that whoever installed this door before had the foresight to shim it so that our seals line up correctly. There's no reason to take off the existing shims that are there unless it affects how our storm door is going to install. So we're going to pull this, we're going to do the same technique here, cutting the caulking, pressing against the Z-bar so we don't damage the existing frame. I'm gonna grab my ladder. I've been blessed with four feet, four inches, or five feet, four inches. going to remove the old caulking as well. caulking at the top, especially around capping, it should easily 
peel away the rest of the way. It also helps to have a new blade on your knife. It makes a world of difference. And we're gonna re remove the old strike plate from the existing storm door. The nice thing about the Anderson 3000 series storm door is that it has a continuous strike plate. So it doesn't matter how the door lines up, you don't have to install any additional hardware to make the door latch. I'm going to leave that up there. There's nothing on the back side. Cool. So the beauty about this storm door from Anderson, it's already pre-assembled. Pre-assembled, it already has the hardware installed. And it has the sill, let's call it the sill jig on it. And it has a clip to hold the door together square the way that you need it. So we're going to pick this door up just like it is from the box and just throw it in the opening. It should fit. Like a glove. You can't ask for anything more than that. Very cool. We're just gonna go ahead and pre-drill all our screws right into our right into our jam. So I have in my pocket one eighth inch drill bit that'll fit right inside my Makita drill. And I'm just gonna swap back and forth between the drill bit and the number two Phillips. I always like to start from the hinge side because that's what commands how the door operates. I said I put six screws in my pocket first. Put six screws in my pocket first because that's how many screws are on the hinge side of the door. Or that's how many screw holes come pre-drilled on the hinge side of the door. So I'm gonna pull off my drill bit. Put on my number two back in place. Go right into the holes that I already pre-drilled. So Anderson really pretty much thought of everything for the ease of the installation of the 3000 series. But they're very unforgiving when the door is not the right size for the opening. We don't have that problem with this opening. Now I'm going to go back to my installation kit and put the rest of the screws in my pocket. Now I know if you have seen my other 
video for the MCO 200 series, all the Anderson doors and MCO doors come with these installation sponges. You're not gonna need these with the 3000 series. And we talked about uh, at the 200 series that they need these sponges for um, the spacing on the handle side of the Z-bar. We're not gonna need that for this door. since This is already pre-assembled. I got my number two, got the screws in my pocket. Let get straight to it. What we are going to do though, I think we might decide to put on the expansion depending on if we want to hide anything at the top of the door, which we probably won't need to. It looks pretty good at the top of the door. And I'm going to place it right here just in case I need it. So the first four holes that I pre-drilled on the hinge side, we can go ahead and throw our screws in there. Once we get those four screws installed on the handle side, pretty much almost done actually we're not we're gonna do our three screws at the top of the doorway pre-drill they say don't put screws in your mouth so this is one of those times where it's do as i say and not as i do there we go at the top of the door there's a small space that I think I would rather use the expansion piece to hide the old paint and the difference in color because sometimes you just need to do that and that's what we're gonna do if we're gonna use the expansion piece the installation kit only comes with enough screws to put one on either side of the storm door and then the other three screws go on the expansion. This is what we're going to do. The expansion just makes it look that much better. So that's for this particular installation. When you install your expansion piece, make sure that the edge of the expansion piece is at the edge of the door itself as well. Once we get that installed, we can remove the spacing clips. And once, since I'm up here, I'm gonna remove that clip up there, or I would say disengage it. And I'll disengage the clip at the bottom. You just position your body where you can grab with two fingers and pull it back. Once you hear it click, then it's disengaged. Then what I like to do is I'll grab my 1 8 inch drill bit, I'll put it back in the drill, you have these retention clips that are spacing the door for you. So I'll put my one eighth inch drill bit in there. I'll pop it out towards the inside. I'll stick my fingers in here where the handle set goes and I'll just pull the door back. That's it. 
The door is practically done. I'll open up the door. And I'll rest my ladder so it doesn't fall on me. Reinstall my 1 8 inch drill bit. And I'll start pre-drilling the interior side of the hinge side. Number two, drill bit back in my pocket, and I have exactly the amount of screws left over to put in the hinge side screws on the interior of the Z bar. This is why when you install the expansion piece, you can't install all three screws on the frame at the top because then you'll be missing a screw for the expansion piece and I'm out of screws. That's it. This guy is super easy. What I like to do is I'll stick my drill in the hole. I'll grab it with my finger just like that and I'll pull it back. And that guy's done. And this right here, this is the continuous strike plate that I was talking about from the inside it doesn't matter how this side lines up the door is always going to latch on the continuous strike plate now we grab our handle set we're going to grab our handle set and our uh, window handle kit for the stored screen the storm deck. Next thing I like to install is your small box for the window handle kit, the storm and screen door kit for the handle. I'll open up that guy. Put that there. Just put these on the side. Paper. And inside the handle are the screws in a tiny little bag. Once again, do as I say, not as I do. And I'll put these screws in my mouth. Okay, the way I like to do this screen is I'll use the same storing tape. I'll stick it on the window and I'll pull the window down. Once I do that, now I can get rid of the tape. Put that on the side. There's pre-drilled holes on the self-storing screen for the 3000 series. You, you uh, orient the handle where you can read the name right side up. If your bit is magnetic, it helps a lot. And you go ahead and... As soon as the head makes contact with the plastic, you stop turning the drill. Otherwise, you run the risk of stripping the hole and just opening up a can of worms you want nothing to do with. Slap that up there, and now... You remove the shipping clips at the top, at the bottom, and the bottom. There you go. All you should have to do is loosen up that screw, push up the spacing shipping clip out of the way. And that's a wrap. Now, go with your handle set. Handle sets, this is a nice one. Uh, it looks like bronze or something, that's really cool. Okay. You get our keys. Either you put the keys on the floor inside the house or in your pocket. Especially if you're working over a deck with slots in it. Put that over there. I always like to install these handles. I like to install them with the curve up. Some guys like to install them with the curve down. Honestly, I don't think it makes a difference. So I'm sure I'm gonna have a comment from somebody 
telling me how it's supposed to be installed. Personally, I like it that way. These handle sets already come keyed in a way where they can only go in one way. Now, some of you might be asking, JP6, Pete, what is that little button on the handle set? I get that question a lot. And I'll tell you what it is for. Anderson makes their handle sets for all of their Anderson series doors. This little button is for the 4000 series door where you rise, you push up on the button, you rotate the handle up and it disengages the entire glass panel. But this is a 3000 series. So you don't need that. Don't worry about it. If you don't look at it, it won't matter. You turn the deadbolt till it just engages just a little bit. What that does is it lines you up so you can get your strike plate cover on there. Whenever you install these screws, I always say, don't use your drill at first. Line, it, line the threads up, finger tight. Once they're lined up, then you can use your drill to go the rest of the way. Because if you cross thread these, you are not gonna be able to fix it. That's how delicate these handle sets are. If you cross thread them, you break the head off, that's it. Especially if it's a special order handle set, you can't just go to the store and get another one. You gotta wait for however long it takes the store to send another one. Cool. So I got them started, now I can use my drill. When you use an impact drill, you turn and then as soon as it makes contact, you stop. There's no reason at all to over torque these because if you over torque them, you'll squeeze the door and then the handle and the lock set won't operate freely. There you go. And our deadbolts aligned. Now we grab the key. We throw the key in the door, make sure that works leave the key there the customer can take it out when they're ready to use their door finally what we're going to do is we're going to install the piston at the bottom and then we're going to install the screw cap covers on this door the piston is in the installation kit and the screws for the piston are always in the green bag for the installation kit so this storm door, come on inside. All the way inside. And I'm gonna close this door. Oh, there you go. Forgot to. There you go. Brilliant. So, with the 3000 series, the holes are already pre drilled for the piston. You don't even have to worry about lining it up, it's ready to go. So whenever you get your bracket for, for the piston, I always like to line up the bottom of the bracket with the top of the sweep. If you do that, you can't go wrong with the installation. There's, no, there's not much thinking if you know what you're doing. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, take off my helmet so I don't block the camera. I'll line that up with the top of the sweep and I'll mark it. Once I got my three marks, now I can drill it. So now I have this guy pre-drilled. The next screws I use are the three long ones that come with the kit. Just like the MCO 200 series, I always start with the center one. Uh, 
I need to push this one. Now they come with the installation clip. Here I'm gonna pull this back so it engages. You're supposed to put this guy on here like that. Well, put the pin in there, pull it back again. Ouch. Let it do its thing. Okay, we gotta pull that back again. There we go. There we go. Uh, and the short pin, the short pin goes in to the door closer bracket. There we go. And we'll line up our door closer bracket. It looks like it goes in the third hole. And that's what we're gonna do. why I don't like pulling the trigger all the way and just let the, the drill go all willy-nilly is because we run the risk of stripping the head of the screw or scratching the paint. So I like to control what the drill does with short bursts. Now you pull off your plastic spacer there. And I think we're about 90% done. Now we're gonna grab our screw caps. I always like to install top one first. These are really well made by Emco. They're not by Anderson. They're not um, hard to install. We put a lot of thought into the shape of them. So you just hook it at the bottom of it where it just grabs the lip. Run the top of your finger. Run your finger across the top of the cap. That's it. Now we're gonna do the two sides. This is the way I like to do it. Since I'm short, I'll start lower. I'll install the screw cap a little bit and then I'll slide it up or it comes out. Then I'll run my finger down on the edge and it automatically grabs the lip of the frame. Oh. We've got two screws we gotta install. Short a screw. Down here? Yeah, we'll put this guy in there. That's too short. Oh, here it is. Okay. Right. Same thing. You hook the plastic on the inside. Run your finger. This one's got a little crease on it, so we're gonna put that at the bottom of the door. That one looks a lot cleaner.
So for me, I'll put my thumb on it and I'll put my other finger on top and that helps me, give me the pressure I need to get the screw cap cover in place. Give it a little help from this side. Never use metal or any kind of uh, tool that could possibly scratch the decaps because they scratch very easy. And that's it. Anderson 3000 series storm door installed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments. Thank you.